Hello everyone and welcome back to Spine Brawl. The conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan over the contested Nagorno-Karabakh region continues. Multiple ceasefires have been violated so far. So Sam, what's the latest? Yeah, as you mentioned, multiple <clears throat> ceasefires and truces have been violated. The latest was in an effort to mediate the decades-long conflict, the foreign ministers of Armenia and Azerbaijan met in Geneva on 30th of October for talks brokered by the Minsk Group, Russia, United States, France. Uh, <clears throat> but a uh, few hours after they announced the truce, uh, they announced the truce has been broken. Again, both sides accuse each other of breaking the truce. So the conflict continues. Uh, Guterres, you, uh, the head of the UN, has again called for immediate, you know, uh, immediate uh, stop to conflict and fighting, but, you know, nobody's listening, basically. But there has been some interesting development on uh, other grounds. Uh, U.S. rejected uh, Turkey as a potential mediator in the conflict. They said that Turkey does not, cannot play a positive role in mediating this conflict. That was quite interesting. This is something that basically uh, Azerbaijan has been pushing for with uh, both Russia and now U.S. opposing, France obviously opposing. I don't think that needs to be even asked at this point. So that was one development. Perhaps more importantly, in many ways, um, uh, Iran is playing a, is a starting to play a more significant role in the conflict. As we mentioned before, Iranian cities have been hit by most probably by uh, Azerbaijani drones and missiles. So Iran deployed about 200 tanks and some forces to the borders with Azerbaijan and Armenia to protect the borders. And today, actually, the Iranian foreign minister, Mr. Zarif, uh, warned other nations and everybody, basically, he warned them that they, he, he believes he has confirmation that there are uh, terrorists that were active in Syria are now active in this conflict. And this cannot be good news for anybody in the region, as it can only bring about more conflict and more uh, uh, more uh, instability. <clears throat> but more importantly, you, uh, following uh, this was actually this started uh, before the latest uh, truce was broken. I believe this was announced when the foreign ministers were in Geneva. But uh, Abbas Arakchi, who's the deputy foreign minister in Iran, announced that Iran is proposing its own initiative uh, for peace. And in it, they emphasized uh, uh, the integrity of internationally recognized borders, as well as protection for minorities. Uh, mean so just to kind of understand what that would mean since currently Nagorno-Karabakh is officially recognized as a part of Azerbaijan but they're populated mainly by ethnic Armenians so I guess the, the, their truce and their proposition would kind of be that it rem the status of the region remains the same then I well uh, there is no details on the thing but let's First of all, let's just say this, that they have in the, I mean, this is somewhat of a political act from Iran's side as well. In their announcement, they heavily criticize the Minsk group. They say some countries in Minsk group, there is three countries in the Minsk group. So it's clear who they are referring to. They say some countries in the Minsk group are not from the region and are not related or uh, ethically or ethnically, sorry, or uh, culturally, they are not connected to the region. And they, yeah, so it's talking about France and the US, basically, because Russia is right there. So who's not from the region? Yeah, and they have no connection to the region, and they have proven their inefficiency during the last three decades. So it's time for a new, basically, initiative. And they've actually, interestingly, though, uh, the deputy prime, deputy foreign minister met with the uh, Azeri uh, president, then with, met with the uh, Armenian prime minister and foreign minister, I believe, and then went to Ankara and met with Turkish foreign minister. So that's how, and I believe they are co in complete contact with uh, Russia as well. So they are basically, they are at 
they are representing the same front as Russia right now, it seems. Because Russia has taken the same position, you know, that internationally recognized borders should be respected, ethnic minorities should be protected. To be honest, I think if you're, if you're looking at what's going to be the end game, I think this Iranian and Russian suggestion would be to return the seven areas surrounding surrounding the Nagorno-Karabakh region, return those areas to uh, Azerbaijan, except leave a corridor to Nagorno-Karabakh because Nagorno-Karabakh is landlocked, it's surrounded by the Azeri region. So uh, leave a corridor to Armenia, give Nagorno-Karabakh some form of autonomy in similar form as, for example, Kurdistan has in Iraq which is basically, it's independent, but technically it's part of Iraq, right? So I think that's the possible end game, but, uh, you know, there many people may die before we get there. Uh, but yeah, Iran has proposed its own initiative. As we mentioned before, uh, in the original, look, not the original conflict, but in 1990s, uh, during that war, Iran also uh, played a role in the peace uh, in bringing peace then but that truce was broken by armenian side uh, uh, so you know who knows uh, what's going to happen this time around but it's clearly iran is getting more worried about the whole conflict and it's important to note that iran is the only country that has borders with both of uh, i mean I think georgia has borders with both countries as well but i mean iran is the only power probably, I should say, that has borders with these two countries. Turkey, uh, only, uh, although, uh, no, 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 wait, wait, because, sorry, because they are such weird countries, because there is an area of Azerbaijan that is basically in uh, borders Turkey and Armenia, but is completely disconnected from rest of Azerbaijan, at Javan. So, no, Turkey also has borders with both countries, but Iran is the only country that has border with both mainlands and with Nagorno-Karabakh. Nagorno-Karabakh and the surrounding regions border Iran. So it has the most physical contact with the conflict, so to speak. And uh, yeah, that's that's how the conflict seems to be going. Oh, and that's another uh, one more important development on the conflict is the fact that Armenia is increasing its push for Russian assistance. Nikol Pashanyan made a formal request for uh, from Russia to make its military and security commitments to Armenia clear. I think they, if Russia doesn't help them soon, they might threaten to uh, expel Russians from their military base. Uh, you know, so although perhaps not very soon because Armenia is in no position to um, negotiate right now, but they are becoming more aggressive in their demands for Russian help uh, against Azerbaijan. Yeah, the, the, this latest episode of the conflict, I think, has gone a bit longer than it was first ex expected. I think at first <laughs> it was maybe the idea that in a week or so this could be wrapped up and some kind of real ceasefire and truce could be reached. But I think we're well into a, well into a month now. And if I'm not mistaken, there's been around at least a thousand civilian casualties on both sides so far, with half of the population of Nagorno-Karabakh having been displaced. Uh, yeah, to be honest, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, we, I don't, at least I don't speak about the human aspect of the conflict a lot, but yeah, that's, yeah. The, no, I, I mean, this was just was an update that we wanted to give on all the latest, if not. Yeah, yeah, Every no, time no. if we start that That's way, we're never going to get to the to the, to the updates. But okay, and then, yeah, so let's keep this conversation uh, moving. And if you like this video so far, please make sure to like and subscribe. And we're just going to talk a little bit about Turkey, which has, of course, been very much involved in this conflict and kind of going head to head against France here. But there also there's also been some other events that have developed which have pinned largely Turkey against France. So do you want to share a couple of words about that, Sam? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, I'm sure most people heard about this. There was a republication of the cartoons of Prophet Muhammad in French uh, Charlie Hebdo magazine. This led to a teacher, French teacher, sharing it in a classroom. And then uh, one of the students, 
uh, who was a Russian immigrant from Dagestan region. Uh, Dagestan, by the way, is a region in nor northern Caucasus, very near to Nagorno-Karabakh uh, conflict. Uh, Russian region, man. Yeah, Dagestan is uh, usually in Iranian, by the way, uh, like historical thinking and all that. It is the border, is the ancient border of Iran with the West because the city of Darpand is there with the with the Ira Iranian equivalent of the Chinese wall and all that. Very beautiful cities. Anyway, uh, that's uh, yeah. There was a in a very gruesome act that a student beheaded the student which uh, beheaded the teacher there was uh, there was outrage from all corners of the world including including the muslim world with most everybody condemned the move however then macron came out and gave a couple of very strong speeches uh, in which he said islamic world was in crisis they needed enlightenment and in another one he said fear will change sides which sounded a lot like a threat and uh, this is, uh, let's remember, this is in France, country with the highest number of Muslims in Europe, largely uh, second generation or immigrants from uh, Northern Africa, former French colonies. And in France, there has been a, French have a different concept of secularism than Anglo-Saxon word and freedom of speech than Anglo-Saxon word. Uh, the, the, I believe it's called laïcé, or there is a law in France called laïcé, which is uh, has many different interpretations. Its interpretations has changed through many years. It came about to limit the power of the Catholic Church, and but now it's been uh, by it's argued by some it's been used to discriminate against Muslims. Some other people say that no, it's part of French culture and it's used to used to keep French culture secular and French state secular, and it's a good thing. So uh, Macron seemed to uh, go with a very traditional version of understanding of that law. His, uh, uh, his speeches sparked uh, very negative reactions in the Islamic world, especially in the Sunni world, where French products were largely boycotted. The boycott actually started before Erdogan made his speech in which he said the French president Macron needs uh, basically needs to see a mental health professional and he has problems in his brain <laughs> and uh, people uh, and then he also called for a boycott although I think he basically saw the trend and jump on it more you know because already French products were being boycotted in uh, Saudi Arabia in Oman both by the public and by private businesses. Uh, and, you know, uh, so uh, that was a th trend already happening. Uh, 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 so, again, the tensions between Erdogan and Macron are increasing. It seems Erdogan is increasing its attempts to become the leader of the Sunni world. This was especially highlighted because it seemed his criticisms of France was very much coordinated with Pakistan because Pakistan really followed closely. Uh, Malaysia even or Indonesia, they, they uh, you know, a lot of people echoed what Erdogan said in many ways. So it seems he's noticing a vacuum in the Sunni leadership and he's trying to fill that vacuum. To, uh, earlier today, Macron gave an interview to Al Jazeera in which he was far more conciliatory. He said he understand the outrage in the Islamic world, but he wants the Islamic world to understand his position as a moder as somebody who has to moderate between different interests and has to keep things calm. He made quite significant attacks on Erdogan. He said uh, Turkey and Erdogan specifically, they are displaying imperialistic ambitions in the region, which threatens instability. And he, if he talks with respect, we have no problem. Uh, as you can see, as he, he mentioned that France has offered its help uh, in, in the recent earthquake that hit both Greece and Turkey. So again, he was trying to say that I'm just trying to keep the peace and Erdogan is one who's uh, trying to steer trouble, basically. Um, 
it's been quite interesting. Yeah, it's a quite interesting development. It seems it's gonna be. This seems to become a uh, Turkey European relations seem to become more and more intense as time goes wa- goes on, and it, the fronts are unlimited. It seems you have the Libyan thing, uh, which by the Akron mentions in the he, he mentions he criticizes. Uh, Turkey for his actions in Syria. He says NATO feels betrayed by Turkey. They are bellicose in their attitude towards their NATO allies. So you see they have problems in Syria, Libya, Lebanon, uh, Eastern Mediterranean Sea, Nagorno-Karabakh uh, with Greece, and now uh, the whole Islamic world and you know economic issue and all that. So yeah, the tensions are rising and kind of the new fronts are being opened every day.